All right, here we are back. The command is to sketch this hyperbola and identify all the different parts. So let's get to work on that. Let's first of all find that it is sitting here in standard form almost, except this 4 cannot be here. So we have the 1 that we need, and we have this was fine, and all we have to do is move the 4. So we can do that by the thing that made the most sense to you when we were doing ellipses, you just reduced. So 4 goes into itself once, and 16 4 times. So we have x squared over 4 minus y squared over 16 equals 1. Is this a horizontal or a vertical? Well, our training over here said when the x squared term is positive, then it is a horizontal. So we have a horizontal uh, transverse axis. So the two branches will look like the ones that we had on our example in the beginning of the class in that orientation. Notice Hector and Kyle are not there. So the vertex is 0 and 0. So that's nice. So I'm sorry, I keep calling it it's the center. So I'm going to put the center right there, and that is not going to be a point on the hyperbola, but it will be involved. All right, so now I will take a look at uh, some other things. Here's how a wise way to do a hyperbola, and I've seen it in most books, and I believe it's even in your book, but it's not the initial instruction in your book. So let me go ahead and show you this because you need a way to sketch the hyperbola. This is the most efficient way. So what I'm going to do, start with a sissy chart. And I'm only going to allow two points on the sissy chart. I'm going to zero out x and see what y is. And then I'll zero out y and see what x is. These will be very valuable in sketching the hyperbola. So when I put a zero here, I get 0 squared over 4, 0, it, minus y squared over 16 equals 1. So I can do this mentally, but I will show you uh, step by step. The first term zeroed out, then I had this, and I'm solving for y. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 16, let's say minus 16, and then I take the square root. The square root of a negative 16, you'll recall, is 4i plus or minus 4i. So that's an odd answer, but it will be useful. Let's do the same thing. You go ahead and zero out y and tell me what x is. So when I zero out y, this term is gone, and I get x squared over 4 equals 1. Multiply both sides by 4 and take the square root, I get plus or minus 2. Alright, so I can graph plus or minus 2. And I would like to be able to graph plus or minus 4i, but i is imaginary and this is the real plane. So I am going to graph just plus or minus 4, 0 plus or minus 4. And then I'll speak about those two points because they aren't really on the hyperbola. These points, the four that I just graphed, form the midpoints of a rectangular box, which I'm going to now make. The, re the midpoints of the sides of a rectangular box. So notice these points are on the sides of the box, on the middle of each side. Now I can take the uh, is that showing up? It looks pretty good. I'm going to take the diagonals. I'm supposed to go through the center and the corners. Missed a little bit there, so do better than I did. Now, which way does this hyperbola go? Does it go here, bound it from the top and the bottom? Or is it going to go side to side? Well, we already determined that because it's horizontal. But if you forgot, you know these points, the imaginary ones, helped us get the asymptotes, but they aren't really on the hyperbola. These are, in fact, those are the vertices. So now I can use this as a boundary line. 
touch the vertice and go like that. So that is the most efficient way to graph the hyperbola. So we now know that the ver vertex on this side is 2, 0, and the vertex on this side is minus 2, 0. The only other thing I would like to have is the name of these asymptotes, and that comes from y equals mx plus b. b is where it crosses the y-axis, which is 0, so we don't have a b to worry about. But, and the slope of this line is rise over run. Notice we went over 2 and up 4. 2 and 4. So rise over run gives me a slope of 2. So y equals 2x is the name of this asymptote. And this one will work similarly, except the slope will be in the negative direction. y equals negative 2x. All right. So last but not least, we need to find the equation or the location of the foci. So I'll put in the foci. And I haven't given you the tool to do that. I told you about A and B over here, but so we have an A of 2 and we have a B of 4 in this one. But I haven't told you the relationship with uh, the, the foci. And it turns out the foci are located at C. I did mention that from here to here is C. So if I had that number, I could get the location. And the relationship between AB and the hyperbola and C are A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's a little different on the ellipse. So our A value is 2, our B value is 4, and we get uh, 16 plus 4, we get the square root of 20 for C, which reduces to 2 square roots of 5, and that was all really what I need. So the foci are on the x-axis, so we're going to go over 2 square roots of 5, 0, and on the other side is going to be negative 2 square roots of 5, 0. All right. You'll be coming in working on those, so hopefully that makes sense and you've got it all down nice and neat and will be able to show me. Very good. Have a good evening. Bye.